Hello YouTube. I uh, figured I'd make a quick video on creating an NES repro, uh, a reproduction cartridge. So I figured I'd make one uh, for Castlevania since the local shop that sells games wants to charge 80 bucks for it and I think that's crazy. So the first thing is I've got my emulator here. I'm gonna start the uh, the ROM and make sure this is what I'm looking for. I've just got in um, an EEPROM chip. This particular one is an AMD uh, 27C010. Um, and that's what you need. It's a one megabyte chip, which if you divide it by eight for eight bits, you'll get 128 um, left over and it's 128 KB ROM. Here it is. Uh, I have a program called Famirom and you can Google and find this. Here is the app. It's kind of kind of different looking, sort of cool. Here's the file I got when I unzipped the Castlevania ROM. I'm going to just drag it on top of the Famirom app. And it comes up, it sees that it's 128K and that it's a 27C010. Um, this is the uh, header info that it extracts from the ROM file. Anyway, so I'm going to click split. And then if we go back here, you can see it's recreated the ROM image file. I'm just going to drag this new file onto the burner. And I'll go ahead and burn this to disk. This is how I get the file prepared and then ultimately moved over to a computer which can take that file and burn it into this chip, which is what we need in the cartridge. So uh, I'll burn this CD-ROM and then I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, we're back at the ROM burning computer, which is a incredibly old 486 uh, computer I had in college. And uh, in the middle there, you're looking at my super cheap uh, Chinese uh, EEPROM eraser. And I think it was uh, John Riggs on YouTube said these are like the uh, easy bake ovens for computer nerds. You simply put your uh, EEPROM chip in the drawer there. Uh, set your timer. 20 minutes is about right. Uh, and then you turn on... The device and an ultraviolet bulb will shine through the window of your EEPROM or EEPROM, yeah, EEPROM chips that you have loaded in the drawer and after 20 minutes are completely erased. Here is the uh, zero insertion force socket um, and uh, that's where you put the chip that we're going to burn, which I'll load that up in a second here. Uh, and then you clamp the lever down the ribbon cable goes inside this computer. Now I know you can buy a much more modern ROM burner on eBay and I think they cost between 100 and 200 bucks or if you're kind of a cheapskate like me and you've been doing uh, electronic hobbies for a little while I bought this EEPROM burner uh, used for ten dollars. It's a uh, Needham PB10 back uh, you know, 15 years ago, um, it was probably old 15 years ago, but 20, 25 years ago, it was all the rage and it probably cost a few hundred dollars. But, uh, now, uh, not too many people have, uh, old computers that have ISA 16 slots in them like this one needs. Um, and so I got it for a good deal, but it still works for all the chips that I'm interested in burning. So anyways, uh, over here, uh, you see the, uh, the computer here is uh, is running DOS. Um, I work with a young guy. He's like, yeah, I was reading up on this old operating system. It's called DOS. It's like, DOS? What are you talking about, man? Um, uh, not too many people are using DOS anymore, but it's just funny to hear someone who's clearly never used it or talked about it. Um, and so they, they call it by that name. So here's uh, the ROM. Uh, that I just moved over onto the uh, CD-ROM from the more modern computer to bring it onto this computer. I'm going to copy this over to my working directory and then start the EEPROM burner. 
Here's how we start the EEPROM program EMP. And here it comes. Boop. All right, so I'm gonna get the chip loaded up and the ROM software uh, moved into my working directory and I'll see you in two seconds. All right, we're back. Here's the chip uh, loaded into the socket of the burner. Notice, uh, I don't know how easy it is to see, but there's a notch that's right here on the front of the chip. That's uh, what signifies the top of the chip because pin one is always to the left of the notch. So for this EEPROM burner, you put the chip all the way so the bottom is backed up to the last slot and the notch is facing the, uh, the ZIF uh, lever, the zero and four, uh, insertion force lever. And then the lever is down to lock this dude in place. And uh, now we're back to our software. Um, so you start out, I hit five to select the device. Uh, let's see, we're gonna go select AMD, that's who makes the chip, and 27C10, that's what we got. We've got our device selected, now let's um, also notice the K buffer size. Picking the right chip will automatically pick the correct buffer size. So that's important when you go to load a file name, I'm gonna hit the V. And we're gonna select uh, my ROMs directory on this machine. Okay, and there's uh, there's the Castlevania ROM. Okay, um, and so now I will select eight to actually load that um, file into the buffer and it's successfully loaded everything in which is great so now i'll hit buffer editor so you can see this is the contents of castlevania before you load the buffer uh, if you've just started this program these will all be zeroed out so i'm going to back up one and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to verify that this chip is erased because i bought it used Okay, so it's empty, right? And uh, we are going to, I'll do this one just for fun. I expect this to fail because I haven't burned it yet. It's an empty chip. It should not equal the contents of the buffer. Yep, and it doesn't. And it can check that quickly by just verifying the checksum. Okay, I've rambled on long enough. Let's double check. We have AMD 27C010. We checked the voltages. We checked that the chip was empty. Uh, we've loaded in our Castlevania ROM, and now there's nothing left to do but uh, program the chip. I'm gonna hit one. Okay, we confirmed we've backed up our chip with the bottom against the edge of the slot. The notch is pointed towards the ZIF socket lever, but there's uh, space in front because our chip is not taking up the full length of the socket um, so it's properly um, put in and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and press return all right now I expect this will probably take about I don't know five or ten minutes to program because it's not a small EEPROM I'll cut this off and I'll cut it back on when it's done Oh, geez, hey. Uh, it turns out the algorithm for programming this chip is much faster than the uh, the vendor of the chip I burned last time, which was the same size. It took like five minutes. This one uh, programmed very quickly. All right, and so now, let's just run a couple of, uh, let's be OCD and run a couple of extra checks, right? Verify the device is erased. We expect that to fail, it's no longer erased, right? Verify device equals the buffer. It should, because we just burned it from the contents of the buffer. Okay, that looks good. All right, I'd call that a successful burn. So, uh, that's that. There we go. Uh, that's Castlevania. 
right? I'm going to put a, uh, a blue uh, painter's uh, tape label on this guy um, to protect the window from ultraviolet light, and then I'm going to put it into my ROM cart. This was a double dribble cartridge, and I've got two double dribbles and zero Castlevania, so I took the uh, I ordered a replacement reproduction label online. Here is the uh, PC board, and so what I'll do next is I will unsolder this mask programmed um, program ROM. You don't on these. You don't need to replace the character ROM. Only this program ROM. So I'll replace. I'll unsolder this. And then I'll solder in the uh, the EEPROM that I just programmed, and then uh, and then that's it, man. Instead of paying eighty bucks for this game, I paid two ninety nine. So can't beat that. Anyways, that's it for this video, and I'll talk to you all later. Thanks. Bye.